Hey everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, bringing you Monday Minutes. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. It's great to be back. I just flew in from uh, Arizona yesterday after spending several days out there with the Gilberts and a great group of people learning X-Lights in my two-day hands-on training course. So we had a great blast uh, learning Learning, learning, learning. And I always learn in my classes. It's been a while since I've taught a hands-on class. So it was fun to kind of blow the dust off and get out there and interact with people who really want to learn how to use X-Lights and take it to the next level. Um, When I got to the airport, I saw this uh, message in one of the Facebook groups talking about how a person who purchased one of my sequences was struggling with getting whole house effects to look good on their home. They simply didn't have the HD models and they didn't have the meat or a number of pixels to where it looked great going across their house. And this one sequence is called uh, Noel He Is Born, where I used a few different whole house effects and I use them for symbolism, make a cross or various other explosions. And I basically said, hey, have you thought about doing what I'm about to show you. And what I'm about to show you may help you make your less denser shows look better with whole house effects. And you probably never knew you could do this. Before I get going, please smash that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as it helps me uh, afford coffee. That's about it, yeah, and, 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 and coffee's good. Let's get going here. I have a sequence before us open. And I want you to pay attention on the left side over here, what's happening in the screen when it transitions. And you'll see that we have this shock wave and we have some uh, fan or pinwheel effects going on. And that looks great for this layout with a whole bunch of things on there, right? Let's go to another one. We'll scoot on over here. Uh, Here's another one. We'll just click on it. And we see that there's this big cross happening here. And again, Maybe that looks great on here, but maybe it has challenges on a less dense show. Same thing here with some shaders, shaders and snow. And we go to this next section and we have a really cool shader here uh, that I think looks really, really cool. If I click on it, you'll see that that is the interdimensional matrix. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shader but it's what you do with the shaders that counts. And then this last little section here, as you can see, I sort of am giving away the trick here, and then we're gonna do this somewhere else. So I'm done with this layout here, this this world. I'm gonna go to another one, and let's see the layout. Let's make sure, nope, that's the wrong layout. Let's go over here to the layout. I wanna show you, that's a little, less dense. Here we go. Yeah. So if you see this layout here, sure, there are a few HD props, but you might have 16 or 24 inch flakes or some other models that have some density to them that you can use to get that continuity, like movement and sort of spread the love. And I'm going to show you how to spread the love here when we're talking about whole house effects. Whole house effects don't always have to be whole house effects, and this is where the rubber hits the road. So if we go back here to the beginning and we look at this section right here where we have that explosion, right here. And this still looks pretty good here. I would be okay with this, but what if we took all three of these effects and go to our layer settings and we click on render style, Now, since we have all three selected, you're going to want to click on uh, Bulk Edit. So right-click on the Render Styles, choose Bulk Edit, and let's scroll down here and see what this looks like with uh, Overlay Centered. Now, if you have a combination of uh, maybe some Grand Illusions or native files and custom uh, uh, native models and custom models, Uh, You might try Overlay Centered, or you might want to try Per Model, Per Preview, all right? You get to one of my classes, you'll learn exactly why this is important. But I'm going to try Overlay Centered. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind, some effects may be blown up so that they can reach the edge of the property. In this case here, when we watch this play back, you're going to see 
it resolves a little too fast, a little too fast with that shock wave. And that's because I have the shock wave set to radius two at 245. Well, your 24 inch flake, that's just a little bit too much. So all you have to do is just finesse this, bring this down some, bring it down, I don't know, about, I don't know, 35, 36, and then bring down the width a little bit less. Just, just take a guess and then watch it play back. And here we go. And then that's a very nice, smooth transition that's slowly making its way on most of the props. If you want to give it a little bit more, you certainly can. We can make it a little bit wider on that width too, and maybe adjust that width uh, radius to just a little bit more. And we'll watch this again. And we're looking for this resolve, and it's filling up more of the larger props. It looks better, and that's great. That's really all you need to do with that. You're still going to get those movements on, across your props and look much better than maybe not seeing the full density because you don't have the density. Okay, uh, if we click on this section right here, we see we've got uh, a, a pinwheel that's acting like a cross and we have this uh, meteor going here. So if I select both of these, right click, render style, bulk edit, Let's click on overlay center again. And now when we look at this, let's see what it does. That's kind of cool. And you might even like this better than having it on the whole house. Because now we have some uh, continuity or, or, or a connection with these props and the mega tree and the matrix. So this just becomes a very easy choice you could make. There we go. Let's go to this next section. What do we have here? We have these funky looking shaders and some snow. So again, we could take these, right click, bulk edit, change this to overlay centered. And now we have this. And maybe you're going to like this better. Okay. Uh, let's look. What do we have here? Sort of the same thing. You could do that. And if you wanted to, and you can see here that I intentionally already did that with these effects. I use per model per preview because I probably have grand illusions in my layout, which I do, and that worked out best for this. So what you could do is you could select all of this if you wanted to. Right click, overlay center, and click OK, and then we're going to get this to be spread across all of your models that are in your all pixels group, okay? Uh, could you also just take this section, copy this and paste this anywhere you want? Absolutely, absolutely. And apply the render style accordingly. If it was just a single prop that's not in a group, then you would probably use default or per model uh, to get that to look just right for you. And that's as simple as it is. I think it's very important <clears throat> when you are purchasing other people's sequences that you get the value uh, associated with it. Uh, a lot of times you can be fooled into seeing someone show and going, oh, I can't wait to see that on my house. And it's like, you know, that person has, you know, 30, 40,000 pixels and you're starting off with 7,000, you put it on your home and maybe you're going to be disappointed. So it's important that you have some of these tool sets in your arsenal, quick ways to fix this potential problem so that it still looks amazing on your show. You will probably grow your show over the years and then you can start to put these back into play and do the full whole house or what if you have a stretch of land where you have things that are really sparse you got a bunch of stuff going on over here a bunch of stuff going on over here maybe over here but overall it sort of just doesn't work or maybe you've got something on the side of your house you could put those in groups and then apply these same effects at that group level to isolate and get that look great from this side, from this side, and this side, or in these different sections of your show. So it's really up to you how you utilize the effects. I never expect people to know all of this, and this is why I like doing training. So I hope this has been beneficial for you and your show if you're starting off and you're not putting out 50 to 100,000 pixels your first year, which I just don't think anybody should. Anyway, I hope this has been beneficial. I'm Ron. 
from Extreme Sequences. This has been Monday Minutes. We'll catch you next time. See ya.